Well, hello there. Jackie Holland here in Sherman, Texas. I'm with Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries, a ministry to hurting people from all walks of life, from the jailhouse to the penthouse. We're church status. We're church for the unchurched, I suppose you might say, or church just outside the walls of the church building. You know, you are the church if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the body, that's what I'm going to talk about today, is made up of many members, not just, yeah, of the church, not the church house, but the church. And so today I want to talk about that and just spend a few minutes, and I hope that you will uh, if you if you're available, you get your Bible out. This is uh, this Bible is the New International Version. Uh, this is an interesting Bible. Uh, like a couple of years ago, there was a, a man that whose wife had died, and and uh, and the, somebody contacted me and said he has some stuff over there that he wants to sell, but uh, he's unable, and he lives in another area and if I wanted to sell it I could like split the price so I did but anyway one of the things that I got out of his stuff was this Bible and I love it because the lettering is so big and I don't have to have reading glasses <laughs> and uh, it's a it is a different version obviously than King James it's new international but uh, you can go along with me with your yours if you like uh, first chapter 12 it's talking about concerning spiritual gifts god gives good gifts to people his children men and women alike uh, boys and girls he gives gifts and they and that's just what he does but he says about the gifts of the spirit brothers and sisters i do not want you to be uninformed the, i think the king james is ignorant you know that when you were pagans or unbelievers somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to uh, to believe in idols. But therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, because no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And if I'm, I guess a person could say it, but if they don't mean it, God knows the hearts and the intents. But you know, you know by a person's life, if you're around them very long, if Jesus really is Lord of their life because they can't help but talk about him. They can't help but talk about the Lord. It just comes into their mind. It's on the tip of their tongue. Now, there are different kinds of gifts, the Bible says, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one of them, the same God is at work. So many gifts, different gifts, same God. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The Lord has a purpose and a plan for our life, and there's a there's a reason for everything that he does. And each of us are uniquely and wonderfully created and made, so, he, so it's all... It's all made to order for, for you and for me. <laughs> to one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, another a message of knowledge, and an, by the same Spirit, another one is given a gift of faith. Now, we've all been given faith, a certain amount of faith, and if you have faith, it's a grain of mustard seed. The Bible says you can speak to a mountain, tell it to go, and it has to go. But, I mean, so we have faith. You can't even come to the Lord without faith. It is impossible to please God because you must believe that He is and that He is a re rewarder, salvation, to those who diligently seek Him. But to, says a uh, same spirit, to one another, the gifts of healing, another one, uh, miraculous powers, and others, pro prophecy. They're able, to, the Lord will just speak speak through them or they'll have dreams or visions or prophesy they'll maybe uh, give a message and it'll be so clear that it's the, the Lord has shown them something and if it doesn't come to pass then you know you just lay it aside don't take everything to heart that people say to you I will tell you that just because somebody says God told me to tell you blah 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 you're going to do this or that well Take it with a grain of salt. Just put it on the shelf. Say, thank you. And that put it up there. Or, you know, if it's just ungodly or something, you just say, no, I don't receive that. So you, you could be bold. You can do that. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, so it's discernment. A gift of discernment. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. 
All of these are the work of the one of the same Spirit, and he distributes to each one of them just as he determines. Uh, each distributes them to each one just as he determines. I've read that twice, as he determines. That's the way, that's the way it should be. You know, I can't give you gifts. I can give you a present, but I can't give you spiritual gifts. God can do that. He does that. And, uh, and, and you know pretty much if you, you just kind of know things, you discern things by the Spirit, and you, and you, or you hear, he said to his sheep, hear his voice, they follow him. And so you know that you know. And you, you may not be able to help, your, help yourself, but you want to give, give, give. You just, you just have a gift of giving. You may want to serve, serve, serve. You just want to, like, always be helping somebody and doing something. And you're the first one to say, well, here, I, I think I'll do that. And they say, if you want something done, find somebody really busy. <laughs> And uh, you're probably real gifted in an area, but try not to wear them out. But just as a body, though one has many parts, but all has many parts from one body as it is with Christ. So the body of Christ, the Christians, all have different, we have different gifts, but, that, but we're still a part of the body of Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to born one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and all were given the one spirit to drink of. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So if there are many functions in the body of Christ. There needs to be many functions. If everybody was the, the eyes, then what good would be the ears? So everybody, if they are seers and they know things and see things, and somebody else don't know how to discern or what to do with it, doesn't make much difference, does it? So we need both. We need we need the gifts of the Lord. We need to say, Lord, reveal to me what my gift is. Well, what do you love to do? What's in your heart? What energizes you? What what gets you going in a conversation? You can be sitting at a, have you ever been sitting at a table or a staff meeting or a board meeting or something with with people and and I uh, hear just going, you know, yeah, okay. Uh -huh, yeah. And all of a sudden, somebody will tap in on a subject that just, whoa, you want to get in and on it. You want to say something. You've got, you, you've got, you uh, a gift in you that is connecting and, you, and it's reaching out and you're wanting to connect to that. There are many different kinds of gifts, but the Lord distributes them all. It says, now if the foot should say, I'm not of the hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, it, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the ear should say, I'm not part of the body, it would, it would still, that doesn't mean that it's not part of the body. Just because you, you don't have the same gift as somebody else. Don't lust and, and long and, and seek for other people's gifts. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. But it's always kind of bothered me to see people try to copy others. They want to copy their, their looks, their actions, their deeds, everything they do, they want to do. They want to, There's some people that want to have the same car somebody else got, the same clothes. They, I mean, it's just like, no, be individual and realize this. That's the way God made you. He, you are uniquely formed, uniquely and fearfully and wonderfully made. And so be encouraged about that. Don't try to change yourself. You're part of the body. You're part of God's family and, and and you have different gifts you don't have to do the same thing everybody else does so don't beat yourself up just because you 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 know you're like I you know I can't play in that in that uh, in that game because I'm I don't my mind I don't understand things like this well it's, you know what if you're if you're a creative type person a lot of times you're not you're not big into uh, reading books <laughs> You think differently. We all think differently. It's okay to think differently. In fact, it's a wonderful thing to think differently. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, then where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Now, if they were all one part, then where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. So the body of Christ is many parts, many gifts. You are, you are, 
you are who you are. Don't try to change to please somebody else. You can you can grow, you, you know, body, mind, soul, and spirit. You can grow. You can grow. You can study. You can you can exercise. You can do a lot of things to, to your mind and body. But copying somebody is not one of them. You ask God, Lord, please reveal to me what I'm supposed to do. How do you see me, Lord? What do you see? And sometimes somebody can really, like, read your mail, you might say. They can... They can they have a gift that they can they can just see your heart almost and um, uh, and it, it is a precious thing when it happens so it co so encourages you to get a word the Bible says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pitchers of silver I always love to imagine what a lovely setting that would be and uh, and that's the way we are we we need to be that way to the world people in the world need to see us and think well it, I think there's a little some there's something different about that person. They shouldn't be thinking, oh, they're mean and hateful and hostile. They should be thinking, what is it? They they they've got a genuine smile. They they seem to care. Hmm. Well, maybe you that would cause them to want to get to know you and then ask a few questions. And you can share your faith. You can say, you know, the Lord. I'm just I just I'm just trusting the Lord. He I know He loves me and He He. He loves you too, and isn't that a wonderful thing? And they might say, well, I don't know if he loves me. That gives you an opportunity to say, oh, he loved you so much that he sent his only son into the world to give himself, pay for your sins. Oh, he loves you. Oh, he really loves you, and he really loves me. And so you're very special. See, it, 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 people, people want to be told nice things, but they need to know that there's a purpose for it. There's a purpose for saying good words. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indispensable and the parts that we think are less honorable are treated with special uh, modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment. I'm thinking of this, you know, what... It, what you know your your personal body parts. Everybody's even there. We're all unique and fearfully and wonderfully made. But you know, God sees and He knows how each of us are put together. And you don't need to ever expose yourself to anybody mentally, spiritually, and and, and pour out your and expose the parts that are uncomely to you that you. You know, by throwing a fit or, or you know, <laughs> cussing somebody out, those are uncomely. That's uncomely. That's not. That's not uh, going to lead anybody to, to the Lord. But to be part of what God has called us to be, He wants us to be light and help and hope, and He wants us to be modest. And uh, you know, and it says, you know. Bad company corrupts good morals. So people you hang around with, people can't help but kind of notice you hang with a certain crowd. It's one thing if you're ministering, but if you're just hanging out all the time with certain people and that you know that they're totally ungodly, just living for the devil, you 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 better be careful because instead of you changing them, they they'll change you. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that are lacked. But so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should all have equal concern over each other. God wants us to love one another, care for one another, help one another, and uh, honor one one the Lord and one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices. You know, if somebody loses a loved one, we need to. It's not time to be joking and carrying on. It's it's the time to be somber. And uh, and to, to be aware and and put yourself in their shoes. Or how would you feel? And so that's always a good uh, a good marker, <laughs> you know, to know how to react to certain uh, situations because we do have different gifts. Some people are they're just naturally counselors and. They and they and they can make you feel so good and so loved, and other people can kind of get, you know cause you to just kind of push back and say I don't know. But you know, there's nothing like having somebody that 
is a, is a good comforter and a, a gentle spirit. There's nothing, nothing like it. God has placed in the church both the apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts, healing, helps, guidance, and all kinds of tongues. And and he said, not everybody's, not everybody's going to have all of those. I guess you could, but it says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gift. And this is the part that I'll just kind of, kind of stop at. In 1 Corinthians 13, it's known as, known as the love chapter. And, and uh, you know, it's read at many weddings. It's just read for a lot of things because God is love. God is love and love, love covers a multitude of sins. But this is so important. 1 Corinthians 13, 1, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body of hardship that I may boast, but have no love, then I, I have gained nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. It's not haughty, in other words. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It, love always protects, always hopes. Love always perseveres. Love never fails, That, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are uh, tongues, they will be stilled. Where there's knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, that which is in part disappears. When I was a child, he said, I spoke as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. He said, now I know in part, then I shall know fully. One day we'll know as the Lord knows, we'll know everything. So you don't have to know everything. Don't feel a need to feel like you gotta have an answer for everything. Say, I don't know. Or I don't, I need to, I need to search that matter out. I, I don't really know. It's okay. You don't have to know. Don't make up something. Don't add to or take away from the Bible to try to make your point. But just say, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I want to, I want to see. I want to pray about that. And now these three remain: faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Oh, the greatest of these is love. Love lifted me. Love, love is a is a is an amazing thing. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Love, love causes us to go out of our selfishness and self-centered ways, sometimes even out of our depression or whatever, and, and causes us to reach out to somebody that's more broken than you are, maybe a different matter altogether. But love can do that. Love can make yourself uncomfortable at times. Love can, because love, Love says, you know what? I, I, in your own mind, you're thinking, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't like, I don't like, uh, I don't like to be around drunk people. I don't like to be around cursing. I don't like that. But don't, don't just write off everybody and just say, well, they're a waste of time. No, we're all a work in progress, and remember, we're all at different stages and. St and at times in our life, so many people without the Lord, so many people lost, dying without the Lord. That's the saddest thing in the world. And we've been given gifts. We have no excuse. There's nobody that has an excuse that says, I have no gifts. You have gifts. You need to ask the Lord what that gift is. And, and it, they're reading 12 and 13 of 1 Corinthians and chapter 12 and 13. You're going to, you'll find, I think the Lord is going to show you because you, you may, you say, you know what, I, I I I feel I have feelings. I I I, uh, I weep when others weep. I I I, I, want, I rejoice when 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 they're happy. I want them to be happy. I want to give. I want to love. I want to tell the story about Jesus. I want to tell my 
my story about how he's changed my life. There's so many ways that we can give ourselves away. The body of Christ is different. The hands, the ears, the eyes, the head, the, the body, and we all, it's this, this is the temple. God lives inside us when you become a Christian. And this is the, our house, our physical house is perishing daily, daily. Oh, we put on makeup, stuff like that, fix your hair. Yeah, you can do all that. You do the best you can. Make yourself presentable. It's the right thing to do. Be clean. And <laughs> but uh, you know what? We're all perishing. And unfortunately, many are perishing without the Lord. And there's, there's a old song. It said, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus can save. Jesus can save the worst sinner. And that's why he's given us all these gifts. So if you're a Christian, I've been speaking mainly to Christians, I believe, that you're a Christian and you are, you're very gifted and you've been wondering what your gifts are. You, and, but yet you're kind of have, you're getting them stirred up and you're feeling it. You're feeling the, you're feeling the love. It's coming, it's coming. And, and you're feeling the encouragement to say, you know what, you know, I have a real, I, I just have a real heart for that, that particular matter, whatever it is. Because remember, we're all different. We've all been gifted and we're all necessary. So don't discard the, the people that you don't have the same interest. You don't have to hang out with them and go to the, their meetings or do anything else. I personally love and just enjoy so much doing prison ministry and jail ministry. And uh, and I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed, I don't know, I'm, I'm more, I guess, one-on-one, -on -one, but on the other hand, uh, I like encounters. I just love, <laughs> I love encounters. I always, I can just always know that when you've been touched or you've come near something that was so precious that that you didn't want to, you know, you want to handle it gently. And you sometimes do that with people with lives that are broken and their hearts are broken. And yeah, they may have bad actions and they may be negative or whatever, but there's something so broken there that you're you really desire, well, that's just part of your gifting. That's part of who you are. You may be a soul winner. That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> a soul winner's crown you will win when you win souls to the Lord. It says, he that wins souls is wise. You know, I, I like to think that I bring souls in. I know that I've led people to the Lord. I know God. I, I know that. I know that. I know that he's used me in, with, in healing with miracles and signs and wonders. I know that too. I know that he's given me uh, some gifts, entrepreneurial type gifts to, to start outreaches and, and see them others then say, oh, we're going to do that. And they would take it and then run and they'd explode with, with, with greatness. Uh, and, and, and so it's like kind of encouraging people, stirring up people's gifts. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you're, you say, I'm not part of that body. I have a body. I have a body. But Jesus is not living inside me because I've never asked him to. What do you want to ask him to? You can. You can do it. You first, we, it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none good, no, not one. It says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through, through Jesus Christ our Lord. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. He said, you cannot serve two masters. You've got to choose which one. You're going to serve the, the world, which is the devil, or in yourself, or you're going to serve God. And, because, and let him be in control of you. you. You become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you do that, you can trust him. He will put his Holy Spirit inside you. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. You won't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be timid or afraid. You'll, you'll have wisdom. He will give it to you. He said, if anybody needs wisdom, lacks, lacking in wisdom, ask and I'll give it to you liberally. The Lord will show you what you need to do. He will guide you in every way, in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct the paths. If we ask Jesus, 
Just ask Jesus to come into your heart. And so you're acknowledging you're a sinner. God sent his only son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And he did it by his son going, living a sinless life and, and doing miracles, signs and wonders. But at 33 years old, uh, he was condemned uh, to an old rugged cross. No sin. But yet he took all our sins. He took your sins. He took my sins. He took the sins of the whole world. It doesn't matter what race or culture or anything else, wherever you're from. That has nothing to do with it. He sees your heart. He knows you by name. And he knows who belongs to him. He knows who's going to pray. He knows who's going to call upon his name. He knows who's going to get right with God and say, I'm sick of my old ways. I want to give my life to God and I want to start using my gifts for the right reason. I want to use my gifts for the, to the service of the Lord. But Jesus went to the cross and he paid for your sins and my sins. And he was pierced, he was wounded, and he, was, he, he gave his life for us. And then he went to, they buried him. He was dead for three days. And he, then he raised from the dead. And he appeared to many for, I think, maybe 40 days. And, and many people saw it. And it was all witnessed and, and, and written down. And uh, one day he just said, you know, now I'm going to leave you. I've been telling you this, but, t but today I'm going to leave. I've gone to I'm going to prepare a place for you, for you and for me. That where, when I go, I'm going to come back again. I'm going to receive you then to myself. That where I am, you'll be also. And he says, you know, I hadn't seen, ear hasn't heard. Neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But he said he will reveal it to his saints. So you're, if you're a Christian, you're, you become a saint. Oh, dear. I know that sounds spooky, doesn't it? But you think, I'm not, I'm not a saint. Well, let the Lord do the work that he needs to. And it's a process. It's a daily walk. You, get, you fall down, you get up like a baby. You fall down, you get up, you say, Lord, help me, please. I'm sorry. And God will help you. So that's the pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now in Jesus' name. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse my heart of all unrighteousness. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and my only hope of a home in heaven. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and your fire, the fire of your Holy Spirit, your power, and I will serve you. Help me to live for you. Show me, guide me, direct me, guard me. I receive, I believe you have given me gifts and I want to use my gifts, whether it's my voice singing, whether it's speaking, whether it's doing, whether it's praying, whether it's listening, whether it's just observing and or writing, whatever it is that the Lord has given you. Use that for the glory of God. Well, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but it's not necessary that I hear from you, but I love to hear from you. And I think you can do that by going to um, probably YouTube, the channel, and it's Jackie Holland at Jackie Holland 444. And I think you can write underneath there and then we can, I can read it. And, um, but just tell somebody that you got right with God or you accepted Christ into your heart first time. And uh, that, that blesses me, encourages me. But the main thing I want to do today is just to show you we the, the the body of Christ, the believers. Now that you've become a Christian, you're you're part of the body of Christ. So you're di you may be different. You say, well, "Yeah, I'm different. I dress different. Look, I'm." You may be tattooed from from tooth to toe now. <laughs> I don't know. Is that, but you know what? God is looking at the heart. He's not outward. That man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. And aren't we glad? Aren't we happy about that? Again, my name is Jackie Holland, and it's Jackie Holland uh, at Jackie Holland 444 uh, on, on YouTube. And it, the ministry is whosoever will outreach ministries.org. Whosoever will outreach ministries.org. Let me hear from you, or to go be sure and tell somebody. I got right with God today, and I'm so happy, and I'm going to use my gifts for the Lord. God bless you.